If you are into video games and video game news, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz! And we've got some interesting stories to get through, but first, let me tell you more about the game that's currently on screen if you are watching this on YouTube, and that is Fights in Tight Spaces. I uh, played a couple more hours of this, and nothing really has changed. To be absolutely honest, I've been unlocking more cards and different deck types, going through various battles, getting better bit by bit. Yeah, there really isn't much more to say about the game, honestly. It's still a different looking Slay the Spire, and that's perfectly fine. This will likely be a game I return to from time to time when I'm waiting for someone to chat with, or I am waiting for a video to process for the YouTube channel. But yeah, it's fun. I enjoy it. But if you have Slay the Spy already, I would say complete that or get through as much as you want on that first before heading into this game. Unless you really like what this game is doing. And now let's get into the news from June 27th to June 28th, and we will start with one small story before we get into the main topic here, and it's unfortunately a sad one. I reported a few episodes back that a new development studio was going to take over the reins for Star Wars The Old Republic from Bioware on the behest of EA. And now that it's being finalized, EA has now let go of several employees from Bioware. Though no numbers have been cited at this point, it looks like the employees who specialize in MMOs are likely the ones getting the axe. In a blog post announcing the restructuring, Bioware GM Gary McKay stated that they hope to help get the affected workers and other studios that could use their help around various EA studios if possible. With Bioware looking to go back into making single player games and concentrating solely on Dragon Age and Mass Effect, this is sadly not a surprise that these employees are being let go. And while for gamers, it's a sign that development time is going more into beloved franchises instead of a long-running MMO no one really talks about, the likelihood that these developers will find work within EA rather quickly seems likely. EA runs numerous MMOs and mobile games within that structure that could likely use more hands in development. And that's just counting the games that what we know about at this point. Hopefully everyone affected will land jobs pretty soon. And now let's get to the top story, which consists of information that's coming out during the FTC vs. Microsoft hearing on blocking the acquisition of Acquisition Blizzard to Microsoft. So let's start with what Jim Ryan said during a video disposition from the case, namely that he says publishers and developers hate Game Pass. When being questioned by Microsoft's lawyer about comments he made during an investor call, he said that Game Pass has led to Sony having to make large acquisitions. Ryan then continued during the call, I have talked to all publishers, and they unanimously do not like Game Pass because it's value destructive. He continued to say that he believed it to be true and that it is a commonly held belief amongst all publishers he speaks to. I don't doubt that publishers may have said this to Ryan, who are essentially devaluing products to a point where more savvy buyers would wait for a game to be on Game Pass if they are on the fence on, per on plunking down cash. Whereas in the past, there was a small percentage chance that they would take the plunge and make the purchase anyway. And yet, Sony with PlayStation Plus is doing the same thing as Game Pass, though nowhere near as good, of course. If these programs are so destructive and detested by his partners, why did they then copy that same formula for their service? It surely could be just to compete, but this is once again another instance of Sony wanting the courts to look the other way from Sony when they are pulling the same business tactics as Microsoft. Continuing with what Ryan said, he said that uh, cloud gaming on Sony's platform won't be a major part of their business until around 2025 to 2035. This question was definitely set up as a way to further the claims as to why the CMA blocked the acquisition due to the potential of cloud gaming. Otherwise, it's doubtful that this would have been discussed in the first place. Sony seems like they are taking every tactic in the book in order to block this deal, including portraying themselves as a plucky under dog who will be dominated in, of all things, cloud gaming, and they simply don't have the resources and time to ever match the progress Microsoft has. Next one, Bobby Kotick made a disposition as well on Wednesday, where he was asked if he considered putting Call of Duty on Switch. He said he had, but decided against it, saying that it was an error in judgment on his part for not doing so. Kotick said he made his decision when he saw the prototypes of the Switch and its handheld capabilities. He thought it wasn't going to be as wildly successful as it became. And to be fair to Kotick here, in the only ways I could be fair to Kotick, they did put COD on the Wii U with two games, Black Ops 2 
and Ghosts. Both games did not sell well. The portables market was considered to be dying off thanks to the mobile market at the time. So I could see why Nintendo's gamble might have looked like something to get out of at the point. And honestly, even if the first COD went on Switch and sold well, so the audience of COD. They want the best graphics and online capabilities when it came to their multiplayer games, and they do not compromise on that at all. The first Switch version might have sold well as a launch title, but would have ended up losing more and more sales as each iteration came. And you are probably wondering, why was this discussed at the court hearing to begin with? My guess? The FTC was trying to establish that Nintendo shouldn't be counted as a competitor to Microsoft and Sony, and the FTC was going to use Kodak's reasoning for not putting it on the Switch as some kind of proof to that assessment. However, Activision has put other games on the Switch in later ports, such as Overwatch and Crash 4, and that wouldn't have worked necessarily in the first place. And probably one of the more interesting discoveries for most people during the hearing will likely be the long list of studios that Microsoft was willing to acquire. On a list that was made in 2021, it showed over 100 different development houses and studios that Microsoft was looking to acquire. Studios such as CD Projekt Red, Bloober Team, Level 5, Square Enix, and From Software were on that list. But as VGC stated in their story, the more interesting targets seemed to have been Playtonic Games, a development studio known for the ukulele games. This studio is made of former Rare developers who created Banjo Kazooie, which would have been an interesting acquisition target. The likely reason why this list was shown was to paint Microsoft as a company that was trying to dominate the space by buying everything in sight, but it's more likely that this was a rough draft of targets that they were considering to go after, not a final list of kill targets for acquisition. All big companies that look into acquiring properties and subsidiaries have this kind of strategy in mind. As potential targets, hash out exactly what would be useful in acquiring them, then cut the list into a smaller, more manageable list. The FTC tried to portray this as an over-enveloping force that wanted to blot out the sun and take out the entire industry is a strategy in hoping that the people who, that makes the, this decision is ignorant on how acquisition and merger development works, which is likely the case. I will bet money Sony has the same kind of list. How else do they know what targets are best to help them further their business through acquisitions and mergers? The more and more the evidence being shown is pouring out to the public, the more and more I'm starting to see this acquisition go through. FTC's case is relying on the fact that the courts are ignorant on how the business of video games actually works, and all Microsoft needs to do is show that Sony is doing the same exact things that Microsoft is being accused of. The only difference is that Sony is doing it in a much more efficient manner. And with each piece of evidence shown, it's becoming increasingly clear that the FTC didn't have much to stand on when it came to the acquisition fight which is becoming more puzzling as to why they went so hard in the first place. And that concludes the Gaming News Roundup and this episode of I Am The Wiz. Thursday, I'm going to talk about what I've been playing all week in Thing the Backlog, so check that out tomorrow. Friday is another Gaming News Roundup, and Saturday, Kim Shackman and I will review the romantic musical drama once. So check that out on the movie and podcast feed. And until then, I am The Wiz, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.